Recording is on. Hello, everyone. Um, this is um, Eternity Developer uh, update. We have the forty first uh, forty first week in two thousand and nineteen. And um, yeah, we have many different uh, people with different projects participating this week and um, yeah, giving an update about their work, what they um, have been working on in the past week, and also why, what issues they faced, and uh, what the results are. So um, I'm see, I see Andrea here, who um, is coordinating um, the efforts around the um, SDK development, um, uh, mainly Python, JavaScript, and Go. And um, now he's hiding his camera. <laughs> and um, please, un uh, please, Andrea, give us some insights about your past week's work and from the different teams that you're coordinating. Um, hello. Yes. So um, as we, as I mentioned last uh, last week uh, on Friday and uh, uh, then. Monday this week we have released all the SDKs following the um, release of the RC3 and this week RC4 of the uh, mainnet node. Um, also the Go SDK is uh, uh, about to be um, <coughs> was released yesterday with support of, of uh, um, Lima R fork uh, uh, that is coming up uh, on testnet on 16th of uh, um, October and then mainnet on 30th of October. Um, so we are uh, now like in the process of uh, uh, improving, like uh, like ironing out uh, the, the little problems that we find out with the reserve the SDKs uh, and uh, supporting the. Uh, request uh, of uh, clarification or um, supporting the applic uh, application developers for, for to upgrade to the uh, Lima release and protocol afterwards. Uh, I also have an update from the middleware. The middleware is uh, also uh, has been, we have discovered uh, a couple of issues related to um, WebSocket connection. Uh, and uh, that has been fixed and will be released hopefully soon. And uh, on big uh, new uh, functionality that has been uh, um, that will be released soon is is about uh, again supporting options uh, uh, querying an option uh, browsing for the new uh, name option system with the uh, Lima release. And that's all from my side. Perfect. So it sounds everything is on track for the Lima release. So the SDKs are catching up and also the middleware will uh, support the, the naming. I think this is very good and hopefully it will not cause too much trouble and disruption with the app developers that are using these SDKs. And they still have, I think, another two weeks or so to, um, yeah, to update their apps so they, don't, they, they will work fine. The upcoming upgrade. Thank you very much, Andrea, for, for this update. Um, next to you on my screen is um, Daniela, who is um, also working on SDKs, or more specifically on the Alexia SDK. So what have been your challenges in the past week and uh, the results of your work and from your team? So we were working on uh, fixing uh, and improving fee calculation logic, adjusting channels, naming system contracts, and generalized accounts to be full compatible to Lima release. Right now, we're compatible with all the, those features uh, except uh, for contracts and generalized accounts as we're finishing this today. Also, we worked on refactoring transactions posting logic documentation improvement and adjustment and this is my update thank you thank you very much daniela um yeah it's also good to hear that um, the alexia sdk is on track and um, yeah i personally hope that we will see more demos like the one you showed 
um, on AE Universe conference in Prague in the future. And um, also to mention this here, the videos are now all online on YouTube and can be found on the Eternity YouTube channel. So you can check out all the different um, presentations there. So thank you, Daniela. Thank you. Um, I would go to one guest uh, who is uh, part of the team of AirGap, which is uh, Andy. And um, yeah, you guys not only develop the AirGap application, but also uh, basically maintain your own SDK and library that needs to catch up and be up to date. So please give us a few insights on how this goes and um, yeah, what, what type of achievements you had in the past week or weeks. Yeah. Yeah, so um, what I'm going to talk about, we did in the last two weeks because I wasn't in the last update call. Um, so yeah, we worked, uh, we had a small update for the wallet that uh, basically just changed the message um, when the tokens will be migrated because some people have been asking um, when they are available. So we now change that to the end of October when the hard fork is going to happen. Uh, this week we had some very productive discussions around the AE access. Um, we decided because there was a big dispute, uh, or like, a, yeah, there was some, some uh, traction between AEX2 and 7 because they overlap in some areas. So now we decided as the authors of AEX7 that we will remove it or revoke it. And we will then build, uh, come up with a new AEX that builds upon AEX2. And this um, has now been kind of discussed again, but we actually talked about this when we were in Berlin. So we are actually already ready with a proof of concept of this new um, AEX implementation. And once we clean up the code a bit more, I will share it with uh, some other people from the AE team, for example, Andrea, so they can take a look. And that's very exciting for me at least because uh, it's a big step and then um, we have also had some discussions on how we can improve the base app uh, or like regarding a bug that prevents the base app from from working with the vault on android and we hopefully have some uh, release there that fixes that cool yeah, and for sure, sure, sure. Our, our uh, our, uh, our library, library is also on track to be, to be um, um, updated with the lima release uh, can very nice, very interesting. Can you also say a few words just to the AXs and what's the topic of them? Because I think not everybody is aware um, what what the like uh, basically the headline and the topics are. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's basically regarding uh, Chrome extensions, how DApps can communicate with wallets, and uh, AX two has some approach, and AX um, seven was basically what we used internally at AirGap, and we are now um, basically. Uh, adjusting our structure to use uh, what AEX2 proposes. So then Very it nice. will not be like two, two standards uh, competing, but rather one standard and we just um, add like our optimized serialization for QR codes on top. Great. Yeah, this is very great to hear. And also um, what I've spotted in these AXs and like, like pushing for standards there is that the um, Chrome extension wallet uh, from Milan is moving forward, also integrating, I think it's AX9 for tokens. Have you also looked into this? Is this also a topic at, at AirGap, like a, a future token support? Um, yes, once tokens will be supported, we will um, definitely want to add those to, to AirGap, just like ERC20 tokens. Uh, but at Great. this stage, we haven't um, specifically looked into the, the details. But of course, Great. if Milan is looking for feedback, then he can always reach out to us. Perfect. Then let's jump to Milan right away. Thank you very much for your update. And yeah, and ask Milan about the progress and also the updates that happened um, um, uh, with the wallet Chrome extension. Milan, are you here? Can you talk? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Not perfectly well, but we can hear you. So please uh, try. Okay. So, uh, last two weeks we were focusing mostly on the fungible tokens, as uh, you mentioned earlier. Um, last week we made the functionality to enable users to meet learn. Uh, and deploy tokens from the wallet itself. Uh, we fixed that EX2 standardization, so now we are EX2 compatible, and also uh, we built this in some SDK calls, so we can easily call a contract to the ACI. Um, we've 
created a token registry this week, which is smart contract based, uh, which is storing all the available token addresses for easier access from the UI, from the wallet, and also from other wallet implementations. Uh, it allows everyone to freely uh, put a token contract address. So it's basically uh, working as a library where everyone can just call uh, the function get out tokens and see all the available tokens on the testnet and on the mainnet. We uh, actually described this in the wiki section into the wallet and started the forum post. Um, today we switched to the new SDK version 5.0 and uh, fixed some UI related issues uh, such as languages that were not playing properly and other buttons overlapping and stuff like this. And uh, now we released the new version 0.2.2 which is introducing all the features about the tokens that I was just talking about. Perfect. Great. Thank you, Milan. So just um, because of the audio quality, I, I, I wrap it up one more time. So um, there have been really lots of work in integrating um, the, the, the token AEX proposal also and the graphical user interface for this in the browser extension. So people can now actually create, mint, um, and administrate tokens through that application. Of course, it's all better, but it's already working and nice to see. Plus, um, that, uh, there's a token registry where you can add token addresses and then also call it and, and then get the information. And of course, there has also been work in updating the wallet um, with the newest SDK versions, so JavaScript SDK version, to be compatible with Lima. So lots of things are going on there in the wallet development. And I know that you are also close to the mobile wallet, um, our base wallet or the base wallet, which is coordinated by Stoyan. And um, so I would like to jump to you, Stoyan, if you are here to also hear your results and updates from the past week. Sure, yeah, I'm here. Um... So we've continued to work on some of the things that were working the previous week. Um, those include, we need to reintroduce um, sending to a name. Um, we were waiting for the middleware to help us with a couple of things, a couple of issues. One of them is resolved. The other one should be resolved soon. And once that's the case, we will reintroduce sending by name. Simultaneously with that, we're, um, we began building the interface for naming options, you know, which will be supported after the hard fork. Um, so we're effectively with, within the base app now supporting what's live in production currently while implementing the support for what will be um, in production after the hard fork. It's kind of a tricky task to support two different versions of the protocol within the same application on different networks, but we're working with that and same goes for the SDK. We obviously are using the same SDK, which is 5.00 to, um, to do that. So we're simultaneously testing that, that the SDK itself works well for both of um, these versions of the protocol. Um, along with that, we're about to collect some feedback on the redeem uh, functionality based on a QR code or paper wallet if you print your QR codes on paper. I'm going to um, send to a handful of people some uh, generated QR codes with testnet tokens to try the, um, the experience and give us some feedback. Really nice. Feedback is good. Uh, we'll release it next week. Will it also uh, yes, include, um, sorry, will it also include a way to generate this, like a script or a, 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 so, a, a GUI to generate these QR codes, or is it only to redeem? Sure. So we have the script already exists. Um, it's a Python script. It's on GitHub. Um, I'm modifying the template because right now there's a script and there's a, a PDF template where if you generate the code, you can automatically uh, kind of print your paper wallets and tell lot of people. Um, I'm about to modify the template because the template was created a long time ago when this was first worked on, but it yep. was not finished. So I'm going to update it and then upload everything back on GitHub. So there is a script. There's not a UI for it. You have to know how to use no worries. it. Yeah, cool. Great. So sorry, I didn't want to interrupt your update too. So please continue. Yeah. And then um, we are 
working on deep linking right now, uh, as we've mentioned before, we're going to share it at some point early next week for um, app developers to play with. So we're looking forward to everyone's feedback on that. Um, and we, uh, um, this week, share the implementation draft of the metadata expansion, which standardizes um, how decentralized applications running on Eternity um, share their share their data such as like data idle such name such like idle I mean sorry name I mean sorry name icon and so on and so forth icon and so on and so forth um so that's um so that's when we're when we're collecting feedback on it feedback on it. Um we're also um, hoping that we're also hoping that this stamp um, um reused by other reused protocols by other protocols because we're actually we're actually, actually using the web manifest the web manifest to add some 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 to add as some to add 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 if you were another protocol, such as Ethereum, for example, you could take the exact same standard and just change that field and call it Ethereum networks and then put your networks in there. And then the whole and this uh, standard can be reused, hopefully, by anyone in the blockchain space. Um, uh, so, so meaning the same standard can be used for any network. So if I'm an app developer and I support different protocols, I could basically have one manifest filed and, and only have one uh, protocol specific field per protocol um so hopefully that's hopefully we're doing a favor uh to the whole blockchain application community not just eternity um and let's see what else pretty cool this was also discussed in um an in internal workshop in prague that uh we want to like if, if like we would do such hard work in pushing for standards that we also kind of distribute them a little bit to other protocols to also gather their feedback and yeah hopefully have some people um, agree with the designs and also taking them into their projects yes and so um, in addition to this we have some small fixes one of them is that we currently have a bit of a um, lag between when you send the transaction and and when it shows up in the transaction history and that's because uh when you when we confirm that the transaction was sent we get the response directly from the node but the transaction history comes from the middleware and there's some latency there and so we're thinking what's the best way to um to render this information quickly and so this being a decentralized uh system or distributed system uh, there's always going to be some latency in syncing the nodes and the middleware and so on and so forth but we're um, looking at how much this latency is and what is the best way to make the user experience smooth even if uh, we're sort of buffering the information by accessing it first directly from the node and then from the middleware we basically are kind of paving the way for crypto applications which will always have some latency to kind of create a, a user experience that's kind of on par with, an, with, a, with centralized applications where things are appear to be seamless, uh, even though they're probably not. Um, so that's uh, a task we're working on as well. We, we want to, this is a problem that won't go away because even if the network gets, I mean, it, even as blockchain protocols get faster, like we, we still, there will be some latency and we want to figure out what's the best way to, to work with that. Um, and that's it. Um, we're looking forward to our next release next week for some of these things to cool. be ready for people to try. Cool. I think this is very important research and I have noticed this uh, myself with the latency. So sometimes you see uh, the, the tra transaction is already confirmed in a microblock and you see it in the transaction history, but maybe your wallet doesn't show it yet because the node is not in sync and stuff like this. And I think there will be a lot of work in uh, UX on the front end side to explain users why this is happening and yeah um, yeah it's also, yeah it's also it's also cross it's also teamwork because teamwork. we need to kind of yeah. work yeah. with uh, you know the infrastructure syncing then with the middleware so we kind of need to come together and see what's what's the latency what's the best solution it's it, it requires to cooperate it's not something that we can do on our own without them and 
or that they can fix for us without us. So we're going to come together to work on this. Perfect. Thank you, Stoyan. And um, yeah, another application developer that I see here, or let's say it integration slash application, more or less a backend application, um, is Peter, who um, is, is, I think, still um, busy with um, getting um, Eternity on the General Bytes uh, crypto ATMs. Um, yeah, you have you have built the integration with the community built Java SDK, and uh, this was a, I think a very nice uh, journey. Um, can you tell us what uh, your status is, what the results are, and um, yeah, if um, if it's ready or still work to do, or if you still run into issues here? Hi everyone. Hi Amin. So we haven't done this week any development. Uh, we're still waiting for a response from General Bytes. They said that. Uh, they will finish the review with latest uh, changes uh, by the 11th of October, which means today. Uh, I'm thinking of waiting till Monday, and after, if there's no response from them, I'll contact them. I'll contact them personally to see what happens. Uh, meanwhile, we updated uh, our forum thread uh, with uh, chronological changes that happened on the project, and that's on our side for now. Great, thank you very much, Peter. Um, yeah, I saw the forum update, and yeah, it's really good. Um, please continue with that, and I mean, we will we will speak next week, and hopefully get this um, integrated and done. So I'm pretty happy that I see a lot of faces from the core here. Um, I mean, um, it's clear that th theoretically just one person could give the update about all the things that happen, but I think it's also good as the um, core protocol team is quite large and everyone is an expert in a specific field and you can kind of break down uh, the Eternity protocol into a lot of modules, for example, state channels or the naming system, or let's say if you work on sync. Um, so we will um, try to give short updates um, based on these different modules and um, let's say, um, areas of research and work. And I'd like to start with Tino, which I see here. And I guess um, you give us an update about uh, the state channel team and the um, progress there. Hello, yes. Um, so we are focusing on two things right now. One is hardening the API as it is. We've um, implemented most of the feedback which we've gathered before AE Universe. So now it's about uh, fixing some runaway test bugs and uh, race conditions, which we find. And also one big chunk of work, which is going on in parallel, is creating a property-based model, model for the current FSM, the state channel FSM. And uh, that model will help um, yeah, implement smaller FSM or sub-FSM, basically, um, for other use cases like um, the discussion about payment channels, which is going on. So that's really important for us to get that done. Um, it's quite quite a big chunk of work, um, so it will be ongoing for quite some time. And that's pretty much it. Perfect. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's good good to have these updates. I Before I go to the next uh, protocol uh, core developer, I see that we have Gustavo back, um, who was working on this payment channel app. And of course, all of us want to see it live and in, in the wild and hosted and working. So welcome back, Gustavo. Um, uh, I don't know if you have been working this week or if you just uh, tuned in and start working next week again. So please uh, say a few words and let us know uh, what the status on your side. Okay, so we cannot hear Gustavo. I guess it's some issues, microphone or similar. Um, so I will just go to the next one and you try maybe to reconnect and then we can get to you afterwards. Um, we have uh, Carol here, which I really enjoy to see you, Carol. Um, yeah, you also touch a lot of um, important parts and areas of the core protocol. So. Um, please give us an insight about about your uh, past week's work and also the yeah the, the the issues you're working on why you work on them and what the what the current status is yeah well <clears throat> uh, these last uh, week plus couple of days uh, i was mostly focused on a garbage collector uh, where we basically <clears throat> find unreachable hashes for account state 
which uh, were introduced by the microforks. And these uh, were uh, occupying quite quite a lot of space in the database. So, so the focus of the work was to um, find uh, reachable hashes of the nodes, uh, which represents the accounts in, in the Merkle Petrusha tree. And uh, the work is mostly done, except uh, the testing uh, hasn't really uh, been started uh, properly, just, just, par just uh, some partial attempts. Uh, and uh, so that's that will be the focus of, of the next week. And uh, previous work uh, was on naming system, namely allow, allowing to query oracles by name and kind of the usability extensions uh, for, for other developers uh, which, which can use these features. So yeah, that, that, that's it. Thank you very much, Carol. Yeah, um, also a good insight. Um, I see Alex disconnected, but we already, I think it's Alexander who is in the stage notes team. So it's not necessary, I think, to get his update. It will be similar to the one from Tino. Alex, you scream, uh, you are out already, but if I say something wrong, just scream and jump in. Um, this is an open table here. So, um, but um, we can try to hear Gustavo if he's back, but I don't think he is. Oh, yeah, you are, Gustavo, can you try to speak? No, total silence, okay, doesn't matter. So um, then we stay with the core protocol and I see Michal here. So Michal, maybe you can just give a basic, I mean, of course, also your area of work, but also not a basic overview stuff that, that was going on in the core dev chat or things that yeah, are um, newsworthy in terms of issues and progress that we made in the past week. Yeah, definitely. Hello, everyone. Uh, so you heard, about channels, you heard about the GC. Uh, GC is uh, in the performance, let's say, department. Uh, it's a base work to make sync faster. And besides that, we actually have a whole bag of goodies uh, uh, that come after uh, a Lima release. For example, uh, I personally started work on uh, naming systems supporting blob computers. So this will open up, uh, you know, potential for uh, all kind of uh, applications. And then we have uh, almost completed work from URI about for signaling. It will make uh, yeah, miners uh, ecosystem more complete. They will be able to signal uh, versions they support. And yeah, uh, still some work is dedicated to stabilizing re Lima release candidate. Uh, today, Hans is uh, freezing and releasing compiler. So we are pretty close. Uh, and the next thing for him is pay for someone transaction. So that's the main uh, like feature uh, scope. And there is a lot, a lot of work uh, in testing and stabilizing the whole thing. And this is it. Great. I'm really excited about those features. So yes, we are. We all are. And actually, I'm. I'm uh, on my side. I'm currently trying to hack together a, a nice um, a press release that hopefully will be picked up by several outlets around all those little things. Uh, not. I mean, a little bit more high level. As we, I think it, there is lots of stuff around, and we are like very deep down in the rabbit hole. But. Um, yeah, I'm working on this. I will get your input or take also take your input and, and share like my draft later on. So um, then everyone can take a look and think and read if this is interesting to read or not. Um, and give me feedback, please. Uh, I will also maybe publish this in the forum or I share this in our dev chat. So thank you very much, Michal. Um, Nikita is also here. Nikita is jumping in between uh, building the fire editor and uh, doing research on, uh, yeah, let's say usability of the protocol um, as an app developer. So Nikita, what are your most interesting uh, things of this week and um, the issues you face and the results in the best case that you that you came up with? Please give us a short uh, intro uh, update. Nice. nice. Can you hear me, yeah? Can you hear me, yeah? Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I received an interesting call just one hour ago um, from a company inquiring 
um, about potential collaborations um, regarding the use of state channels uh, for payments in third world <laughs> nothing official but uh, exclusive news for all of you guys um, this is a thing where we are just basically starting on right now um, unfortunately yeah we should have tackled it maybe a little bit earlier but now we're gonna do it with more force because the demand is is definitely there um, I'm waiting for John to arrive so we can prepare our first draft of, of the strategy, how we're going to tackle it all, um, also from technical side. Um, the other thing is the uh, native tokens. I'm still preparing the like communication campaign to ask the community for uh, their ideas because I would like not to miss any important stuff because I'm also not the stone of wisdom and the core dev team is waiting for specs here just want to talk from my experience but also hear other people what, what they would like to see here um, yeah so native token thing coming and one technical thing which is currently in development as uh, what i'm building is that we can make um turn basically development tutorials for sdks turn them into uh, scaffolds for the code generator of the fire editor and then also then gen um, test these outputs of these code generators uh, basically make them part of the standard tests in the SDK so no SDK developer will ever forget to update um, the documentation and the tutorials so to say and will only have to do it once and from that documentation, everything else will be just derived and generated and will become testable. And I'm almost done with it for the JavaScript SDK and I'm gonna write a AEX for that also too. So finally, by the end of the year, we will never have any outdated tutorials anymore. This is a big statement and I hope it will be true. Thank you very much, Nikita, for, for your work and your efforts. And when we talk so much about straight channels, I think one very easy thing, if we want to like put it into, we have talked about this yesterday briefly, Nikita, was um, these efforts that we are actually doing is bringing like state channel to mobile because uh, state channels work fine and well um, if you run your own node and a node to a node uh, opens a state channel but we are still having quite some technical challenges um, to bring state channels on like on mobile in a very trustless way and lots of research is going um, into that direction and I hope that the Eternity community can soon present results here. Um, now we give it another try, and the last try, I would say, to our application, state channel team, application development team, payment channels um, in um, South America. So Hernan and Gustavo are here. Uh, who wants to talk? Just try it, and whoever voices himself will be the one. Uh, I mean, hi. Yes, can hi, you? we can hear you. How it's. How are you doing? How are they? We, we, do, we do very well and you can see all the different projects and uh, products are evolving. And yeah, we are very interested in um, hearing like what are like your um, issues still right now and your next steps to basically um, give us and the community this uh, nice payment channel demo application that we can all play around with and discuss UX and discuss improvements and things like that. So we are very curious about that. Can you tell us a few words um, about it? Um, yes, of course. Um, basically, our plan is to continue towards 1.0 release of the payment application. Basically, I think that um, as you know, in the VESA app now, it is featured uh, uh, or um, it, the application, it is uh, already added to the uh, feature section, but I think that it's pretty inconvenient to have two uh, applications for customers and merchants. So my plan is to streamline uh, the application into one uh, unified model uh, where customers and merchants can use um the same application for more uh, an easy approach and also um as we have talked in the conference uh, my plan also is to offer uh or port which was th this was the original plan uh port the river sea game uh to the base app with all the open the web shell graphics and 
so on and using the smart contracts and for example uh, playing between uh, base app users wallet users and uh, for example who who wins the game uh, can get a part of the tokens uh, or set the different rules but i think that's uh, a pretty interesting uh, project also so we are in towards that path uh, i hope um, we hope all to continue working and helping each other between the all the teams to continue improving improving in the uh, improving sorry the the application and the platform the eternity platform yeah really nice i think um um yeah this is also um uh, very valuable so um uh, there are lots of efforts are going into um like that everything works uh, that it's feature complete uh, that we support all types of different cases and basically what you and your team is working on is actually putting use on all the things that got built so actually going real into using the protocol and using the SDKs and using the base app and of course you will you change issues there um, from my knowledge we uh, the base app does not have a very good or complete apps uh, registry or list yet and i don't see in the current version the payments app so maybe you guys can also um, speak to each other and what also would be really nice Hanan, is that next to of course publishing all the code for other developers also um, have um, like have a video showing how, how how the app works and things like that so um, other people also like just you know a normal token holder can can play around and experience um, um, payment uh, state channels basically and yeah, I also would like to see that so um, yeah let's 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 get this out there so people can use it can try it can give feedback and um, yeah then we will continue our work in this area I think um, we had everyone who participated in this call like always this is this is what like i think now 10 different projects presented here in the developers update there are many more i counted something around 27 that i personally know which are active in development and i haven't counted the different sections in the core protocol team with that and we are easily above 30 um, but we will have um, written updates in the forum so please also don't forget them like twice a month this really really helps and um, is uh, will also attract people to um, actively join the forum discuss and give feedback and yeah that's basically it from my side thank you very much for showing up today and i wish you all a very nice weekend happy weekend thank you happy weekend, happy weekend. Thank Bye. you for participating Thank and for your work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. See Bye. you in chat. Bye. 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 Bye.